welcome to my ultimate cookery course. Packed with cooking tips, information, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. Right, this is more ultimate food on a budget. Vegetables are such an asset in the kitchen. Healthy, fantastically fresh, and incredibly versatile. And pound for pound, they're so much cheaper than fish or meat. Just make sure you give them plenty of attitude. My first recipe is so quick and easy, but seriously impressive and deceptively cheap. Homemade gnocchi. Making your own gnocchi is so simple to do, yet the results are absolutely stunning. And it's a great way of using up leftover baked potatoes. You can make gnocchi just with flour and eggs. However, the potato gives it that nice, light, sort of creamy, fluffy texture. Just cut them in half, take your spoon and scoop the inside of those potatoes. I'm using leftover baked potatoes, but this really works as well with leftover boiled potatoes. Two choices. You can get a fork and sort of mash the potato and get it nice and light and fluffy, or this little gadget, it's called a ricer. I suppose it's a posh word for a potato masher. Just squeeze gently. You can see how nice and light it is. Almost like fluffy little strands of potato. You can do this when the potatoes are hot. It'll go through the ricer so much quicker. Just slice that off there. Now, a nice spoon of ricotta in. A little touch of salt and pepper. It's really important to season the mixture as we go along, otherwise the gnocchi becomes really bland. Flour over the ricotta. Sieved, so there's no lumps. One delicious egg. Give that a little whisk. Now, make a little well in the center. You want a nice, soft, pliable ball of dough. Give that a really good mix. Get some thyme flowers in there. And this thyme is light, fragrant, and it's just a really nice herb. And with the ricotta, it tastes brilliant. Just pick the little tips of the thyme flowers. Next, flour your hands generously and knead the mixture into a dough. Fold in and push. And basically what it's doing is getting it nice and smooth. As it starts to get a little bit wet, and just that. A little touch of flour. We want something really nice and soft. Now, don't overwork it. It stops the gnocchi from expanding when it hits the pan. That's exactly what I want. A nice, sort of soft, fragrant ball. Cut the ball in half. Lightly flour the hands and just roll it gently. And just think of a, a big, long cigar. The mixture will start getting a little bit sort of wetter, but do not add lots of flour. Now, Lightly flour the knife, so when you slice the gnocchi, it doesn't stick. Cut the dough into bite-sized pieces. Just take your finger, dip it in the flour, and push down. Why? I want my gnocchi to look like a pillow. And for me, the most important part there is that not one of them are identically the same shape. Water on. Bring it up to the boil. A little touch of olive oil in there. Lightly flour your hand. Lift up the gnocchi in to the rolling boiling water. Turn that pan to stop them from sticking at the bottom and let them simmer. And they start to sort of tell you they're cooked when they start floating. Get a pan on, get that nice and hot. Now they're just starting to come up to the top and you can continue cooking them like that. I like blanching them in the water, taking them out and then frying them. To set the gnocchi, heat olive oil in a frying pan. Gently lift up and look, they've doubled in size. Drain it, get rid of the excess water, and straight in to the hot pan. Mm. This is where they start to take on a completely different texture. Nice crisp, sautéed texture on the outside. Noki loves fresh pepper, so pepper in. And you'll see, as I start turning them, I've got this really nice little sort of brown and they're almost puffing up now like little parcels. So I want them nice and sautéed, both sides, but light and creamy in the centre. Fresh garden peas in. And the butter gives it that really nice sort of Bernoisette flavour on the end. Beautiful. Put a little bit of fresh thyme over the peas. And then finally, I want to lift it up. Fresh lemon. Zest the lemon over. 
Uh, smells incredible. And then finally, seal the deal with a touch of grated Parmesan cheese. Give your veg some attitude, and you'll get amazingly elegant dishes on a budget that are always guaranteed to impress. What more do you want from great cooking? Cheap to make, easy to cook, and absolutely stunning. Cooking great food doesn't mean you have to spend a fortune on fancy equipment. Get some basic essentials, and you'll be set in the kitchen. Saucepans. I mean, basically, you don't need a collection of 10. All you need, really, is two. A medium-sized one, followed by a large one. A small pan's great for sauces, heating liquids or rice, whereas your large pan gives you space, perfect for pastas, stews, or when you're cooking in bulk, which keeps costs down. Made from copper to stainless steel. Find what's right for you and always get a lid, which helps heat the pan up as quickly as possible. And the secret behind a great saucepan is the heavier the bottom, the more heat it will conduct. The thinner the bottom, the more chance you've got actually burning your food. Buy the best saucepans you can afford. Take good care of them and they'll last you years, saving you money in the long run. Amazing recipes don't necessarily have to include meat. Cooking vegetarian dishes will reduce your food bills without compromising on taste and flavour. Here are three more recipes to satisfy even the keenest carnivore, like me, that will max out on veg and won't break the bank. Starting with spicy black beans with feta and avocado. First, in a pan, heat olive oil. Add chopped onion and fry until soft. Then finely slice garlic and chilli. Add cumin, cinnamon and black beans, then combine. Cook together until deliciously soft. These small beans come dried or in tins and are a great cheap ingredient to make dishes more substantial. To serve, dollop the black bean mixture on crunchy tortillas. Top with cube ripe avocado, chopped fresh coriander, and crumbled salty feta cheese. Spicy black beans with feta and avocado, a dish that's filling, frugal, and tastes fantastic. My next great veg recipe is leek and greer rusty with fried eggs. In a hot pan. Sweat shredded leeks along with a knob of butter and season. Next, great parboiled potatoes and griot, a hard Swiss cheese with a great nutty flavour. Then combine with the softened leeks. In a pan, heat oil and a little butter. Spoon in the potato, leek and cheese mix. Cook gently until golden and crisp underneath. Then slide onto a plate flip over and return to the pan to finish cooking. Finally, for the perfect topping, fry two eggs and place them on top of the rosti. Top with fresh tarragon. Leek and griot rosti with fried eggs, a simple but substantial dish that makes the most of hearty root veg. A dish that takes as much time to write on a blackboard as it does to cook. Chickpea, cumin and spinach koftas with tahini dressing. In a blender, put tin chickpeas, cumin seeds, paprika and turmeric and blitz to a paste. Next, wilt spinach in olive oil and chop finely. Then add to the chickpea mixture. Sprinkle in gram flour, made from finely ground chickpeas, then shape golf ball sized chunks of the mixture using a spoon and rest in the fridge. When ready to cook, heat oil in a frying pan, shallow fry the koftas until golden brown on all sides, then rest them on kitchen paper to absorb any excess oil. For an easy dipping sauce, mix yogurt with a dollop of tahini and a squeeze of lemon and stir in freshly chopped coriander. A mouth-watering dish that's perfect for sharing. Chickpea, cumin and spinach koftas with tahini dressing. Three amazing recipes with fantastic veg. Proof that even if you're cooking on a budget, you can still eat like a king.
Incredible. Welcome back to my ultimate cookery course. This is how to cook amazing food on a budget. Next up, my guide to getting the best ingredients for your money. My shopping mantra is simple. First, rely on your senses. Make sure whatever you're buying that it looks, smells and really feels good. Second, is to recognise that knowledge is crucial. The more you know personally about where your ingredients are from and how they're produced, the better. So, don't be scared. Ask lots of questions and learn. And when it comes to buying potatoes, a great ingredient if you're cooking on a budget. One greengrocer who can always spot a dud spud is Borough Market Royalty, Fred Foster. It's all about flavour. It's all about choosing the right variety for the right dish. He's been selling top quality veg for over 15 years and really knows his King Edwards from his Duke of York's. Basically, there's two types of potatoes. There's early season and a main crop potato. Early season is basically around about May time. You can't store them. They cannot be stored. You have to buy them and use them within two to three days. When you're buying an early season potato, you must avoid green looking potatoes at all costs. It really is important. And the way you can tell that is if you just brush the potato, the skin comes off really, really easy. And then you want, you want a yellowy or whitey looking potato. The new season potato is a superb potato to use. New season types include Rocket, Home Guard and Maris Bard, but my favourite is the classic Jersey Royal. It has a delicate sweet flavour, it's packed with vitamin C and is great in salads or simply boiled and mixed with olive oil and fresh mint. Jersey potatoes, early crop, are phenomenal. Look at that. Um, <laughs> keep the skin on, it's really important. Just wash it, boil it. It's a beautiful, beautiful potato, and, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about, I know it's a potato, I know it's a bit sad, but we're talking about flavour. Right, then what is a main crop potato? It's the crop that is grown specifically for nine months of the year use. When you're looking at a main crop potato, you need to see that the, the eyes aren't too large because they tend to go right through the potato. They've got to be firm, it's very, very important. If a potato in any way feels a little bit soft, discard it. Storage-wise, dark place, cool place, dry place. And that will last till you eat it. Simple as that. Both early season and main crop potatoes come in two main types, waxy and floury. Waxy potatoes have a smooth, dense flesh, and because they're low in starch, they stay firm when cooked. Types include anya and pink fur, but I love charlotte which has an amazing buttery taste and are great sautéed in stews or served whole with roast chicken. Flowery potatoes have a fluffy, dry texture when cooked, which makes them great for mashing, roasting or cutting into chips. Types include King Edward, whose smooth, creamy flesh is perfect for potato gratins or with rich meats like beef, and Desiree, which have an amazing red skin and are great for baking or as delicious potato wedges. Old-fashioned types, known as heritage potatoes, are now widely available and have fantastic colours and distinctive tastes that are great when you want something different. This one's called Salad Blue. When you cut it, you then see the most amazing colour. And it's perfect, it looks stunning on the plate, a really popular. It's so important when you're going out to pick your potatoes, you already know in advance what you're going to do with that potato. So whether you're going to put it in a salad, whether it's a, a masher or a chipper, or even a baking potato, each variety has a unique flavour. Fred's spot on. Whether new season, main crop, waxy or flowery, potatoes are incredibly versatile and packed with great flavour, the perfect ingredient when you're cooking on a budget. Well, how much do I love potatoes? Well, cook them simply, proper flavours, it doesn't get any better, really. Like all chefs, for me, there's nothing better than seasonal produce at its peak. When fruit and veg is fresh in season and fantastically ripe, I can't wait to get back in the kitchen. To get the most out of your cooking, always use ingredients in their prime. My next recipe is a proper British classic that's super simple to cook and costs next to nothing, a delicious apple crumble. Crumbles are the perfect way to use fruit when it's in season. There's lots of it about, it's nice and cheap, but most importantly, the fruit's at its absolute best. First off, I'm going to make a really nice light caramel. Pan on, nice and low. Great two apples. Mm. 
And this helps to almost sort of pure the apple so much quicker. And there's a lot of flavour in the skin, so don't worry about peeling the fruit. Whether it's pears, plums, peaches, flavour's in the skin. Nice. To start the caramel, a couple of tablespoons of sugar. The sugar helps to get rid of the tartness in the apple. A touch of cinnamon. That starts to make it a little spicy. Open up your vanilla and just scrape out all those seeds. Now, this just makes it light and fragrant. All those seeds in to the sugar. When making caramel, be patient and always swirl the dish instead of stirring it. When the sugar goes brown, add the apple. Mm. That starts to sort of cool down the caramel, but it gives it a really nice sort of caramelized puree. Apple's almost disintegrating. It smells incredible. Turn the gas down. Slice up two apples. It's a crumble that's got no frills. Straightforward. No faffing around. No peeling of the skin. I want them to sort of stand out from the caramel. Apples in. Now those nice thick chunks of apple are sort of almost bedding itself into the puree. Dried cranberries gives it that nice sort of shock in the texture. Sweet and chewy. I want it to sort of taste zesty, spicy, so sit the lemon zest on top of your apples and cranberry. Fresh lemon juice over. And that just gives that extra acidic kick. Takes the cranberries, the apples, the caramel, and the cinnamon to another level. Turn the gas off. Just let that sit. And let's concentrate on the crumble. Flour in. A couple of tablespoons of demerara sugar. Sugar helps to get the topping nice and crispy. Butter in. Give that a nice little sort of rub. What we're looking for is like a, a breadcrumb mixture. Lightly season it with a touch of cinnamon. And the demerara sugar sort of helps to get a nice fine crumble mix. And it stops the butter from sort of melting in that flour. So that's the basic crumble mix. But I'm not finished yet. Muesli. Two thirds crumble, one third muesli. Mix that in. If you haven't got muesli, then crunchy granola works brilliantly too. Lovely. Now, start off in the center and work your way around. I want the crispiness on the top, the puree on the bottom with the caramel, and then the texture in the center. A good tip, turn the gas back on. I want it bubbling before it goes in the oven, because then you've just got to cook the top. So as soon as you see that caramel starting to bubble down the side, in she goes. Let's go. Bake at 200 degrees Celsius for 12 to 14 minutes until golden brown. Smells amazing. <sighs> Beautiful. Still bubbling. And look at it. A delicious but very simple crumble with apples at their absolute best. Beautiful. Next, my tricks of the trade and kitchen tips. First up, cooking pasta. A great budget basic to keep in the cupboard. It can be easily undercooked or overcooked. Here's how to do it properly. First, water in. Nice large pan to make sure the pasta's got sufficient room to cook evenly. Nicely seasoned, absolutely crucial. Olive oil in. That stops the pasta from sticking together. Bring it up to the ball. That's a rolling boil. The secret there, it stops the pasta from sticking together and it gently rolls it around. Now, this is angel pasta, nice thin pasta. Takes three and a half to four minutes. So, into the pan. As it hits the water, it melts and then you turn it around. Tongs. As that starts to melt, gently twist that into the pan. Bring it back up to the boil. If you're bad at timing, then set a timer. Beautiful. To test it, lift the little strand. And you can actually feel it with your fingers. It's still nice and firm. Mm. Al dente. Not a bite, not a strong bite, but just really nice and firm inside. Definitely not crunchy. And then, into a colander, drain the pasta in a light seasoning. Salt and pepper, a tablespoon of olive oil. Mix that through. That stops it from sticking together. And look, 
There you go. Beautiful pasta, al dente. Mm. Cooked perfectly. A tip for making the most of spare bread, blitz leftovers into breadcrumbs, great for stuffing or crab cakes, or cut into chunks and freeze for perfect croutons on demand, or simply tear and use in a delicious rustic salad. Dried pulses like chickpeas or lentils are great for soups and stews and cost pennies. But don't season them until the end of the cooking or the salt makes them go tough. For perfect boiled potatoes, always start them off in cold water and never boiling water. This way, by the time the centers of the potatoes are cooked, the outside won't be falling apart. And when you're cooking potatoes, always cook extra so there's leftovers. They're fantastic to have on hand for making my delicious gnocchi and potato rusties or a classic bubble and squeak. Follow my ultimate cookery course, packed with key lessons, top tips, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. And you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking. Packed with cooking tips, information, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. Right, put your feet up for my perfect TV dinners. Like all chefs, good food is my life. And for me, TV dinners are all about recipes that are fuss-free, quick and easy to make, so however busy you are, you can always knock up brilliant food. My TV dinners need minimum shopping and rely on the staple ingredients you already have in the cupboard, so you can enjoy incredible dishes whenever you want. Starting with my delicious mushroom and leek pasta. This fantastic fast and simple pasta dish made with everyday ingredients just goes to prove you can eat good food whenever you want. Really important to put the water on first so you can just have it gently simmering away, ready for the pasta. While the water comes to the boil, start the sauce by slicing mushrooms. First off, fingers, one in front, two behind. Up and down. Then add olive oil to a hot frying pan. I want that nice colour on the mushrooms. Off the heat, literally 10 seconds. And when you toss something, really important, you get all the ingredients at the end of the pan, push down and pull back. And that noise, that sss, that's all the water coming out of the mushrooms. Next, finally chop a fat clove of garlic. Then prepare your leeks. Just take your knife and go down through the centre, turn it over, and again, into quarters. So you've got all that opening up. And then just rinse the top of that to get rid of any potential dirt or sand. It just breaks up into nice little quarters. Add all that leek into those mushrooms. Beautiful. And now, the secret is to get rid of that water inside the leek. As it cooks down, all the water's gone, you just left that really nice, intense flavour. Garlic's gone nice and crispy. Now, we're going to add a touch of chicken stock in there. Mmm, beautiful. Lasagna sheets. Just going to drop the sheets in to the water. Lasagna sheets are an unusual choice for a dish like this, but they work brilliantly, although any type of pasta you've got in the cupboard will do. And just twist that pan. That stops any pasta actually sticking to the bottom of the pan. Chicken stock will reduce down by half, and it's almost delays the bottom of the pan, basically washed all that wonderful flavour off. Turn the gas down and add a couple of tablespoons of cream. This just enriches the dish, bring it back up to the ball and let it simmer for three to four minutes. Now, the secret of the pasta is just taking it out a little early so you've got that nice texture. Hold up the sheet and just nip it. And you can feel your fingers in the center, it's ready. Turn the sauce down and lay these beautiful sheets of lasagna into that sauce. I'm just going to turn the gas off now and let the pasta sit in there and absorb that amazing sauce. Finish with chopped fresh tarragon. It's a delicious herb that goes brilliantly well with mushrooms and leeks. Just let that sit and almost sort of infuse. To serve, I'm making a quick bruschetta by toasting fresh ciabatta bread. Two nice slices, drizzle that in olive oil. A little bit of garlic. 
just rub the bread. The crust as well. The crust is what really takes that garlic. Now, pan for the bread. A little touch of olive oil as it starts to smoke. Bread in. But look at the pasta now. It's been stained by that amazing sauce to serve. I want a nice spoon of my mushrooms, leeks, and cream. Then I'll take my pasta, just twist it, and let it sit on top. That tarragon has just lifted everything. Bread on. And that's the beauty about something so simple that can be done in 20 minutes with everyday ingredients. A stunning pasta dish. Adding easy and versatile dishes like this to your repertoire is what cooking at home is all about. So you can always make great tasting food at the drop of a hat. With foolproof pasta recipes up your sleeve, you'll always be able to knock up a fantastic lunch or supper. Here are three more of my super fast pasta dishes that are bursting with flavor and cook in minutes. Kicking off with farfalle, with ricotta, pancetta, and peas. Start by frying lardons in a large pan. These smoked chunks of bacon have a delicious, deep, salty flavor that makes them perfect with pasta. When the lardons start to brown, add finely chopped garlic and turn off the heat. Next, add farfalle to boiling salted water. Named after the Italian for butterflies, this bow-tied shaped pasta has a large surface area great for sticking to sauces. Just before the pasta is ready, add frozen peas to the boiling pasta water. Then when the pasta and the peas are cooked, drain and add to the lardons and the garlic. Spoon in creme fraiche. And dot with lumps of creamy ricotta cheese. Season. Then serve. Ready in just 12 minutes. Farfalle with ricotta, pancetta and peas. A delicious quick and easy supper that's ready when you are. My next pronto pasta dish is tagliatelle with quick sausage meat bolognese. First, boil dry tagliatelle in salted water. These long, thin ribbons of pasta come curled up in nests and take around 10 minutes to cook. Then add olive oil to a hot pan and fry finely chopped onion. Thinly sliced garlic and sweat until soft. Next, remove the meat from your sausages by cutting open their skins and crumble into the pan. Fennel or Sicilian sausages are perfect for this dish, but any flavored sausage will do. When the meat has browned, add half cherry tomatoes. Season. And add a few spoonfuls of the pasta cooking water as the starch thickens the sauce and helps it stick to the pasta. Drain the tagliatelle and add to the sausage meat sauce. Finish with freshly grated parmesan. Perfect when you're really busy but still want great tasting food fast. My amazing tagliatelle with quick sausage meat bolognese. My final pasta dish that's ready in a flash and packs a real flavor punch is spaghetti with chili, sardines, and oregano. First, for the crunchy topping, heat olive oil in a frying pan. Add chopped garlic and breadcrumbs. Cook over medium heat until the breadcrumbs are golden. Season and drain on kitchen paper. For the sauce, add the oil from your sardines to a hot pan. Fry finely diced chili and chopped garlic. Next, cook dried spaghetti in boiling water. Then, chop tin sardines into chunks and add to the chili and garlic. Tin sardines are a brilliantly versatile ingredient to have in your cupboard. Packed with protein, full of super healthy omega-3 oils and delicious. Next, drain your pasta and combine with the sardine, chili and garlic mixture. Add leaves of fresh oregano and mix in handfuls of rocket. To serve, pile high 
and topped with the crispy garlic breadcrumbs. Ready in under 15 minutes, spaghetti with chili, sardines and oregano. Healthy, hearty and full of flavour, perfect pasta in moments. Whether you're rushing to put your feet up in front of the telly and need something fast and tasty for the family or simply want something delicious to enjoy, these are three amazing pasta recipes you can learn by heart and cook in minutes. Beautiful. Now, here are five more of my essential cooking tips, starting with how to cook an ingredient that's perfect for a quick and easy TV dinner, chicken breasts. This has to be the most popular part of the chicken. Now, it's very versatile, incredibly tender, very lean, hardly any fat whatsoever. The secret is cooking it without it becoming dry. The first thing is to season it properly, both sides. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Get the pan nice and hot. The secret now is to get a really nice colour on the skin. Really nice colour. No colour, no flavour. Skin side down. Tilt the pan. So it cooks the back of the chicken breast, where it's really nice and round and very fat. Let the pan do the work. Chicken breast normally takes between sort of 10 and 12 minutes to cook properly. Now we've got the colour on the skin. The skin's nice and crispy. We're going to deglaze the pan. Deglaze with masala. Now, masala is a sweet, fortified Italian wine. You can also use white wine. Masala in. Flambe. Burn off the alcohol, which gets rid of that really sort of harsh alcoholic flavour. Roll the chicken around the masala. Deglazing the pan basically means washing the pan and lifting off all that flavour stuck to the bottom of the frying pan and putting it into the sauce. Now, chicken stock. Bring that up to the boil and let it simmer for three to four minutes. It's really important to leave the chicken breast skin side up. The skin's nice and crispy, and it's important now the chicken cooks from underneath. As it starts cooking, it absorbs the stock. So in the centre of the chicken, it stays nice and moist. Now the stock of the masala is reduced down, you can have the confidence to allow it to almost disappear. And look, the combination between the masala and the chicken stock it's quite sweet, so it finishes the chicken with this really nice, delicious glaze on top. And there you go, a delicious, succulent chicken breast with the most amazing, flavoursome skin. Phenomenal. Soups make stunningly simple meals. My tip for adding incredible depth of flavour is to always keep your leftover parmesan rinds. Store them in the freezer, then add to the pan as the soup cooks and leaves to infuse. Then remove before serving, it's less waste and more taste. Another tip to take homemade soup to the next level, whisk in cubes of cold butter just before serving to get a glossy, velvety texture and a beautifully rich taste. Another fantastic standard for a fuss-free weekend eat is the classic baked potato. My tip for a great crispy skin is to use salt to your advantage. Simply add it to the outside before cooking and the salt will draw out the moisture in the oven as it bakes. A touch of salt gives you an amazingly crisp skin on chicken and fish too as well as highlighting the flavour. Home roasted nuts make a delicious TV snack. My tip for peeling them with ease is to simply toast them in the oven for about 10 minutes, wrap in a tea towel and rub until the skins are removed. Perfect sprinkle with sea salt and serve with a glass of wine. This is my ultimate cookery course, 100 recipes to stake your life on. Coming up, I'll be showing you my amazing sweet corn fritters. That is such a delicious recipe. But first, the key to whipping up my ultimate TV dinners is having a well-stocked store cupboard, and even with the basics like tin sardines, tomatoes, pasta or rice, it always pays to know how to buy the best. Next up, my shopping guide to all things pasta. When it comes to the sacred Italian staple, you'll be hard-pressed to find anyone who knows more than pasta supremo Antonio Saccomani. I love pasta so much, I have to eat it at least once a day. He's been selling perfect pasta in London, Soho, for over 35 years and eating great pasta for a lifetime. We make the best pasta in the world, uh, Italy. <laughs> Take away the pasta in Italy, 
and the people died, you know, and, and that's it. <laughs> For a good, very good pasta, you need two ingredients. You need a, a good egg and very good flour, and that's it. This is a durum wheat flour. Look at that. It's so soft. Then it cooks so quick. A couple of minutes in the boiling water, this thin like this, a couple of minutes, it's cooked. This shop is not, it's not big enough to store all the type of pasta. And this is the famous uh, spaghettoni al bronzo. This is penne, different shape. It's called fusilli, orecchiette, orzo, trofiette. Antonio's right. There's a mind-blowing array of incredible pasta types that are great to keep in your store cupboard. Here's my quick guide to some of the different shapes and sizes and how to use them. Small shapes like farfallini, are perfect for making simple stews and soups more substantial and add an extra texture to dishes, like the classic Italian pasta soup, minestrone. Short tubes, like penne, are great for thick cream or tomato-based sauces, as the rigid edges hold more sauce for an incredibly flavor-packed mouthful. Long and thin, like the store-covered essential spaghetti, the classic shape was invented in Naples, but every Italian region has its own spaghetti dish, from bolognese to carbonara, or my favorite, alla vongole, which is spaghetti with delicious steamed clams. Flat noodle-shaped strands, like fettuccine, are perfect with a simple drizzle of olive oil or in rich, buttery dishes, as a little sauce goes a long way, coating the pasta evenly, stopping the strands from sticking together. Then pass the sheets, not just great for lasagnas, but amazing rolled into tubes and filled to make delicious cannelloni or used in quick supper dishes like my mushroom and leek pasta. Finally, speciality pastas, like this spaghetti made with squid ink. It has delicately sweet taste and an amazing jet black color. Great for when you want a delicious dinner that's a little bit different. Whatever shape you go for, always look out for the pastas that have been bronze cut. It means the dough was pressed through a bronze cutting die, which has a subtle rough texture, which helps the sauce stick. As well as all the dried types, pasta also comes fresh, which is brilliant for TV dinners, because it cooks super quick and tastes incredible too. In this shop, we make pasta every day. Look at that. That's beautiful. It's sad to eat it. This pasta is really, really yellow, because we use good quality of eggs. You can Smell the eggs, they come through. It's so good, so fresh, you can even eat it raw like that. It lasts in the fridge two or three days. You can even freeze it and uh, it won't change taste. Whether fresh or dried, pasta's so versatile and quick to cook, it's the perfect TV dinner. So go out, stock up on new shapes, and you'll soon be turning out dishes that would make Pasta Pro Antonio very proud. It looks so nice, so good, so healthy. You know, that's it. Can't resist. We all lead busy lives, but that doesn't mean you have to compromise when it comes to cooking great food. For me, the secret is having recipes you can depend on and a store cupboard full of staple ingredients that can be transformed into quick, delicious dinners on demand. So, shop smart, stock up, and whether you're feeding two or 20, you'll always be ready to cook up something incredible. My next tasty dish uses simple and cheap store cupboard ingredients with stunning results and takes minutes to make. Sweet corn fritters and yogurt dip. It's brilliant to have a number of great recipes up your sleeve to rely on. And let's be honest, we've all got a tin of sweet corn somewhere, so I'm going to show you how to make the most amazing fritter. First off, the mixture. Take your flour, sieve. Really important to sieve the flour. That stops the mixture from having any lumps in there. And just before you get to the end, I want to put half a teaspoon of baking powder. The baking powder gives the mixture some lift in, and just sieve that through. A touch of salt and pepper. Next, an egg. And about four tablespoons of milk. And give that a little whisk. Now, just put a little drizzle of olive oil in there. That helps to relax the mixture. Whisk that in. Make sure we got rid of all those lumps. So look, I want a nice, smooth, almost like a cake mixture. OK. Next, take the seeds out of a chilli to lower the heat. Roll the chilli, so give it a really good shake. 
cut them out, slice in half into quarter, and each quarter in half, and chop through. It's a really nice, quick way of slicing a chilli into the mixture. Spring onion. Take off that outside layer of the spring onion, top and tail. Slice it at an angle. So I've got a bit of texture running through the mixture. I want that nice crunch in coriander. Just slice through nice and gently and get that in there. Next, the sweet corn. Now, drain it from the tin and just pat it dry so it doesn't make the mixture too wet. Give that a nice mix. You can see now I've got two-thirds ingredients and one-third of the mixture to bind together. That's the secret of a good fritter, so you're, you're biting into excitement, not sort of dough. Pan on. Olive oil in. Nice and hot. Get a nice big dessert spoon. You know, there's one nice portion in. Space the fritters evenly around the pan in a clockwise direction, so you always know which one to turn first. Just with the back of your spoon, sort of spread them out a little bit. OK. Palette knife. Just check. You're happy with the colour and turn over. Beautiful. Now for the chilli yoghurt dressing. Deseed and finely chop a red chilli and add to a pot of natural yoghurt. And then some fresh lime. Finish with chopped coriander. Coriander in. And give that a nice mix up. That chilli just lifts it. The lime gives it that nice tanginess. The fritters, they smell amazing. And with the sauce, it tastes fantastic. That is such a delicious recipe using a tin of sweet corn from your cupboard. Amazing. Follow my ultimate cookery course, bursting with valuable lessons, top tips, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. And you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking.